Thank you very much for watching. Today's topic is the god of poetry in Norse mythology, a guy named Bragi. Um, the interesting thing about Bragi is that he is both a god of poetry and an actual poet. And there comes the question, is he the same, so is the god Bragi the same as Bragi Boddason the Old, the poet? Um, was the god based on the figure of this very important poet um, or how they are linked? Uh, intertwined and I will try to give you some information about both these characters and then you can uh, think about this um, uh, yourselves whether uh, the god was based on the poet or how these two characters came together. Um, all right so let's start with Bragi the god of poetry. Uh, this is mentioned in Snorri's Prose Edda uh, very specifically in the so-called Catalogue of the Acid. So the prose Edda written by Snorri Sturluson, I have here a very good translation um, by Anthony Fawkes from the um, uh, Everyman Publishing House. So I recommend to you this book if you're interested in the topic. Um, the uh, prose Edda containing um, a lot of the mythological stories um, of uh, previous ages in uh, the Northern world um, has as its first section uh, the Gulvaginning, which is basically a very long dialogue between this um, uh, legendary Swedish king uh, called uh, Gulvi, but going by the name of Gangleri, um, asking three uh, divinities, three uh, magical entities, um, different questions about the gods and their world. And there is this catalogue of the gods um, in this first section, the um, Gulvaginning. And there we find out, and I'm going to quote to you directly from the translation, that Bragi is excellent in wisdom and more than all in linguistic genius and speech. He knows more about poetry and because of him Bragr is called poetry and from his name that one is called a Bragr who possesses talent beyond others, man or woman. His wife is Idun. Um, Idun is uh, the goddess uh, responsible for the uh, apples of youth, so the ones keeping uh, uh, the gods in Oscar, the um, young. Um, okay, and uh, this is not the only place we find him in the Prose Edda. He also plays an important part in the poetics of Snorri. It is the largest section in this book. Um, it, it is a section called Skoldskaparmål. Uh, he basically explains to uh, contemporary poets um, a lot about uh, the different uh, metaphors, the so-called Kenningar, um, used in um, more archaic poetry uh, and the different types of rhythm and rhymes and so on. So everything they, they should know about creating uh, poetry so that they might um, get in touch again with this ancient art of uh, poetry. So Bragi is um, uh, having a conversation here with another god, uh, Agir. Agir is a god in Norse mythology mostly related to uh, banquets and feasts, so he's like the great host uh, organizing all these banquets for the gods. Um, and this dialogue between Bragi and Agir um, kind of mimics the general dialogue of the book between this uh, legendary Swedish uh, king Gulvi and uh, the uh, three uh, divinities. So he explains to Agir a lot of things regarding uh, the origin of poetry, for example, and uh, uh, the choice of language, uh, how gods and different magical objects can be named, and we find a lot of information about, um, I don't know, Thor's adventures, for example. I also have a video on that, by the way. Okay, um, we should also mention the fact that the Prose Edda is not the only source where Bragi as a god uh, is mentioned. We also find him in older poetry. So the Poetic Edda is also from the 13th century, but I, as I have mentioned a lot of times, uh, the poetry gathered here is a couple of century, centuries older than this. Um, we have, for example, the poem Grimnismol. Um, in stanza 44, he is called the best of poets, Öster Skolda. There is a small list there as well in the whole stanza about um, things which are best in Norse mythology, you know, and you're going to find, uh, for example, the world tree um, uh, Yggdrasil as being the best of trees, and you will find, um, um, I don't know, um, Odin's um, horse Leipnir as being the best of horses and so on. So he, uh, Bragi is the best of poets. 
Um, again, a very entertaining dialogue, this time uh, carried out with the god Loki, is found in the poem Lokasena. Lokasena is a very nice example of what is called flighting. This is a very archaic term. Let's call it a contest of insults. So um, this was very loved in Norse society, like when people gathered and they tried to um, insult each other as uh, originally and as creatively as possible. Uh, it was, of course, not beyond danger to organize such a, uh, such a flighting because, um, uh, yeah, maybe people could get uh, a little too excited and um, uh, take things too seriously and it would also lead to some pretty real violence. Uh, but anyway, this poem is um, uh, very captivating because Loki tries to offend all, the, offend all the gods as much as possible and through, by means of these uh, offenses, we, um, injuries, we, verbal injuries, we find out a lot about stories which are not mentioned elsewhere. In the case of Bragi, um, let's quote from four stanzas here where uh, this dialogue is, um, uh, is mentioned and let's see what kind of language um, the poet, well, in the guise of Loki here, uses in order to describe uh, the god. It's not very flattering. Yeah. So, let's see. So, I'll start with the stanza 12. Mar o mäki kefek ther mins fjor, och böker ther so baugi bragi, sider thu osum ovunt um gjaldir, grem du eigi goth at ther. So Loki tells Bragi, um, I will give you sword and horse, and from my treasure I will pay you a ring, um, unless you offend the gods, do not anger the gods, something like that. So uh, he's basically offering, um, um, in a very diplomatic manner, something um, so that Loki could just... Uh, stop this uh, silly game and um, uh, he also gets a warning uh, not to proceed in um, this malice uh, against the gods. And then let's see what uh, Loki answers in stanza 13. Jos och armbauga mundu ävera begja vanner bragi osa olva er her in i erru thu ert vid viger varaster och skjaraster vid skott. Um, so, you will always be lacking in horses and arm rings, in both of them, Bragi. Um, of the gods and elves present here within, so in the hall, you are um, the, the most worried one about battles and about shooting. And that's pretty much what he says, so he basically accuses him of being a huge uh, coward which was a very uh, deep and serious offense. Um, all right, and then Bravi gets a little upset, as expected, in stanza 14. Veitek e fir utan verak, sosem fir inan emk, egis hol um komin hovulthit, bera eki hendi mer, leta ek therthat fir ligi. So, I know that if, if I were outside, as I am now inside, um, coming to the Hall of Agir, um, I would carry in my hand your head and I would let you uh, pay for your lies. Something like that. Okay, and then, here comes the best part, um, Loki's reply. In stanza 15, Snjallur er tu isessi skala tu svo göra bragi. Bekskrautudur, vega tu gak, ef tu reidersir, hygisk vaterhuat firir. So you are bold sitting in your seat, he says he. Um, you won't do so, you won't do any of that, you adorner of benches. Uh, Bekskrautudur. Um, so he basically tells him that he just likes to sit around, he doesn't do anything uh, productive or he doesn't do anything um, warmongerish. He's not a true warrior. That is the, that is the main implication here. Um, you, if you are angry, um, you go to fight, a brave man fears nothing. Yeah, so you can notice that 
the main insult here is the fact that um, Bragi is not really um, the um, the aggressive, violent type, and he is not he's incapable of defending his honor. Um, yeah, so this is the argument um, Loki is using. Um, this term adorner of benches is um, uh, very offensive because this would generally be a compliment if you're referring to to a woman. Um, uh, on the other hand, we can also think of it from the perspective from the perspective of his profession. If he's a god of poetry, um, you know he's he's involved in all these kinds of um, artistic and creative things, and he's not really interested um, uh, in violence. Um, yeah, and uh, this is exactly what Loki. Uh, is using against him. Uh, besides these uh, uh, two sources, the Poetic and Prose Edda, we also find references to uh, Bragi in uh, Eriksmål and Håkonarmål. These are two poems about uh, two kings, uh, Eric Bloodaxe and Håkon the Good, entering Valhalla, uh, Valhol, and uh, then uh, they are greeted. Um, they are greeted by Bragi the God. Um, which makes us wonder, you know, if they are human kings entering Valhol, maybe Bragi might have also belonged at a certain point to this world of men. And this is a good starting point for uh, the second part of this uh, talk about Bragi the poet. Um, Bragi the old, so Bragi Bodasan. Um, so um, we find something about him um, from the Book of Settlements, the Lontnama book, um, um, describing uh, you know, the, the settling of, um, of Iceland. Um, we find that he, was, he might have been um, re related by marriage to an important Norwegian family um, of local lords, uh, the so-called Hersir. Um, most, more important uh, than this is the fact that he is... <clears throat> Um, the creator of the first, earliest poetry attributed to a named figure, so somebody we really know about. Uh, and he appears in this list called Skoldatal, <coughs> he's the first name, uh, and he appears to have been active in Norway two generations before the settlement of Iceland, which is why the Icelandic sources uh, name him in Gamli, so the old, so he belongs to the prehistory of, um, of Iceland. Um, he might have worked for three kings, Björn at Haugin, uh, Øystein Belli, and the most interesting park, a uh, king going by the name of Ragnar. And this is absolutely fascinating because Snorri Sturluson, so the author of the Prose Edda, actually links uh, the um, uh, Ragnar's Dropa, so the poem in the honor of Ragnar that uh, uh, Bragi wrote, to the Ragnar, yeah, so to uh, Ragnar Lodbrok, so the same one who was the uh, son, of, uh, son of Sigurd, as mentioned in the poem, the one, you know, who led the attack on Paris and who also uh, comes up a lot in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, leading the raids um, in um, uh, the 860s. Um, there is a real chronological and geographical possibility that this was um, uh, actually true. Um, and there are also references in the poet, poem itself, in uh, Ragnar Stropa, that uh, Ragnar Lodbrok was actually the one who commissioned this uh, uh, poem and who was the uh, patron, the protector and lord uh, for whom Bragi worked. So this poem is um, um, his longest preserved poem. He also has a couple of fragments uh, besides this, but this is the most um, consistent and important one, the uh, Ragnar Stropa. Um, it is what is known as an ekphrasis, so this means that he is basically describing the scenes, the mythical scenes, uh, on a shield he got as a present from his patron. So in, in this poem we have two helmingar, it begins with two introductory um, stanzas, then we have four full stanzas, uh, a refrain, a so-called stev, on um, uh, the killing of the gothic king Jormunrek, uh, then we have another group of four stanzas, uh, full stanzas, and the refrain of Stev about the Valkyrie known, Hild, uh, known as Hild and the Battle of the Hjarningar. 
and uh, then there is the stanza about the acquisition uh, of the island, of the Danish island of uh, Sheeland by um, a, a figure named Gevjun from King uh, Gilvi, and then a group of half stanzas or Helmingar on uh, Thor's battle with Jormungand. Um, the poem was um, put together, if you will, uh, from a couple of um, sources and manuscripts. Um, the most important one is, again, the Prose Edda, um, where we find um, references to two events, mythical events, uh, from uh, this whole um, uh, ekphrasis. Um, these two events refer to the uh, uh, killing of um, uh, King uh, Ermanarich, or as he is known in Norse uh, sources, uh, Jormunrek, uh, and the death of his killers as well. And then um, we have the um, story of the never-ending battle uh, orchestrated by uh, Valkyria Hild after she gets kidnapped by uh, a king called Hedin, and then her father attempts to rescue her, but they engage in a never-ending battle. Uh, so his, her kidnapper and her father, because she resurrects all dead warriors at um, night. Um, there is much indicating that, that uh, this poem was actually an ekphrasis, so uh, we have a, a direct address to the public, uh, we have references uh, to the shield itself, and um, a great deal of narrative detail. Um, okay. Uh, the stanzas about Thor fishing for the world serpent for the Midgars Ormer might have come to, um, from another poem. Um, the introductory stanzas might, on the other hand, have belonged to it from the beginning. Um, either way, this um, uh, poem written in uh, the very complicated meter of Drotkvaet uh, shows that um, in the 9th century uh, this was already, this type of poetry was already well established. This type of meter is used for praise poetry uh, mostly and it's um, very difficult to, um, uh, to shape because it contains um, eight lines with six metrical positions uh, and you have the odd lines where you have to have two alliterating um, staves with the first syllable in the even lines and adding up to this you also need internal rhyme. So you need to have vocalic onset and post-vocalic environment. So very complex uh, uh, craftsmanship um, and um, um, this complex of ideas, uh, both formal ideas and uh, the content related ideas of all these mythical references and so on um, underpinning Norse poetry is also inferred from the interesting exchange between Bravi and um, uh, and a troll woman a small cute fragment that I am going to uh, quote to you directly um, so that you can see you know the importance of this art in uh, the Norse uh, world uh, so, skold kalamik, skapnis vidurs, gauts gafrotut, grep oknepan, x olbera, ot skap moda, haksmit bragar, quat er skold nematat. So they call me a skald, a poet, um, the smith of, of the thoughts of vidur, that's another name for Odin. Um, the, the one who gets the gift from Gauter, that's another name for Odin, um, an um, unscan poet, um, the ale bearer of Ig, another name for Odin, um, Amodi, this was the name of the son of Thor, uh, so the, the son, let's say the son, the, the son inspired to create poetry, uh, and the skillful smith of verse. What else does a poet do? Or what else is a poet if not that? So we can see from this very short um, uh, dialogue with this uh, troll woman uh, asking uh, him to introduce himself that um, uh, poetry is perceived um, overall in two manners. So it is a godly gift. Um, for more on this topic, um, look up the uh, legend of the Mead of Poetry. I also made a video on that. 
And secondly, poetry is a craft, ethrot. Um, so it shows not only creativity, it also shows great technological excellence and power. So to, to be able to, to create clever poetry, that was similar to a true craft work. Um, because entertaining courts was, uh, was vital to society um, and it also encouraged the, poem, the poets uh, to uh, grow this art um, and to grow it in such a way that it valued um, intricate uh, syntax and riddling hints at all these uh, heroic legends and um, complex verse forms and um, uh, abstruse diction and so on. I will end this presentation uh, with another quote um, from Ragnar Stropa itself um, so that you can see how how complicated and intricate the whole process was. Um, so, res kofunk reidar mona, Ragnar of fjold sagna. It's very short. The order of the words, however, is completely scrambled. So if you were to have it in, uh, in prose and not in verse, you would have to say um, Ragnar govunk mona reidar um, ras ok Fjold Sagna. So Ragnar gave me uh, a moon of the chariot of the sea king and lots of stories. What does this mean? Well, the chariot of the sea king is a ship and the moon which is placed on it is a shield. So this kind of metaphors. Um, in this verse, by the way, um, he acknowledges the fact that uh, Ragnar provided him with uh, the shield that he is now very um, craftily describing. Okay, at the end of this short talk, there remains the question. Could it have been possible that this very talented poet, Bragi the Old, uh, have been uh, the basis for Bragi? Uh, the god from Norse mythology. There is a real possibility that this might have happened, um, that um, um, someone very real might have uh, been a source of inspiration, so not exactly turned into a god. I think that it would be false to think like that, that he was turned into a god or that he became a god. But we can think of it like... Um, you know, he was um, a true source of inspiration for a god uh, related and uh, to poetry and uh, involved in this whole um, process um, of creating poetry. Don't forget that Odin himself is um, the one providing inspiration, true inspiration uh, to uh, talented poets. So thank you, Bragi, for all your gifts. Um, and um, if you want to uh, know more about Norse culture, um, follow my channel if you want to know more about some vocabulary and grammar stuff related to Germanic languages. Again, try and subscribe to my channel and see uh, if you like it long term. Thank you very much. Have a great day and I will see you soon.